Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we are looking at how to sidechain or how I use sidechaining in my tracks. There are various different ways. There is no right or wrong. So don't worry about it. You can use whatever way you want uh, as long as it's sounding good to you. So just a quick overview. Why do you use sidechaining? There are two main reasons that I can think of. One is to give space of kick and drum. Usually when you have low end in your tracks, which is covered majorly by a bass, a kick, and sometimes low end uh, focused atmospheres, you have to have some space. Now you can create space through EQ for sure, but sometimes it clashes because they are more or less in the same frequency range. And the second reason which I which I personally use is to just give a groove. It's it's much more fun to have a ducking effect and it's much more groovy. It gives sort of like a groove to your song and it gives a bit of variation throughout the song for your listeners. So without a side chaining in a bass atmosphere is okay. So let's just look at bass and kick right now. It would sound like this. So you can see both the kick and the bass are just clashing with each other because they are more or less uh, occupying the same frequency range. So with side chaining, it would sound something like this. So you can hear you have a ducking effect and the kick is much more prominent when we need it. When we don't need it, the bass then fills up and covers the kick up. So there are various ways that you can use side chaining. And uh, the first way is to just simply put a compressor. And I'm using stock plugins and I'll be using third party plugins. You can use whatever plugins that you have. But over here, I'm using the compressor on a bass. So the track that you want to duck is the track that you want to have the compressor or the side chaining in. So the first way is that you load up a compressor on let's say bass, you go over here and click on side chain and select your audio source, which is gonna be in this case, the kick. So I'm selecting kick. And then you have various controls where you can tweak and have the ducking effect, and the ratio of the ducking effect that you desire. So more or less, I start off between four, four is to one ratio of uh, ducking. And uh, I usually aim at minus nine or minus 10 dB of gain reduction. So let's just give it a hit. So it's going minus 11. That's too much. Let's cut it back. Yeah, pretty subtle side chaining. There you go. And then you can go ahead into the graph section and see how much it's tucking. It's just a good visual representation. Another thing to notice is that instead of having a punchy attack, uh, I like to have a smooth attack so that it just glues in together. Somewhere around 15 million seconds, which is still a quite a fast attack, is good. Uh, 15 to 20 is something that you want to aim for. So let's keep it at 15. We're gonna wanna have something of a slow release uh, because it just you just don't want to have a clicky sound at the end of a compression. So you wanna have it smoothly phase out. So let's just give it a listen now again. Let's look at how fast release acts. It's quite transient -y. It's not smooth. There you go. You have a smooth fade out of the compression. Let's increase the ratio a bit. Perfect. There you go. So that's one way that you can use side chaining. Another way is to send your kick track to a bus and then side chain to that bus. So essentially what you're doing is that you're going to the kick track, you're uh, sending it right now. I just want to put it at stereo. 
you send it to another bus, which is a side chaining bus. You can create a side chaining bus, bring it to Unity, which is zero dB. And the next thing that you want to focus is that it should be either pre fader or post pan. You don't want to have post fader. Essentially, what it means is that if you reduce the volume or you do some automation, this would affect the side chaining volume as well. So you want to have post pan or pre fader. So essentially, the signal chain is coming like this and going directly to the bus instead of going through the fader and then to the bus. All right, makes sense. And when you go to the side chain, you don't want to have it also playing into stereo out because now you're gonna have a duplicate sounding kick, which you don't want to have. So just put it as no output. And then you wanna have the compression, which is on the bass, side chain it to the bus, which is in this case, the kick, the side chaining kick and it would give you the same effect. There's nothing different in this. Both the ways are absolutely similar. So those are the two main methods to do side chaining compression. But there's another third way, which I keep getting questions a lot and I've experimented a lot with, but I personally don't use and I personally don't like it. Again, coming back to the same situation, there's nothing right or wrong. If it works for you, it works for you. If you have two or more instruments, let's say bass, atmospheres, and piano, and you don't want to have the plugins that are doing side chaining. Let's say you have a third party plugin load into each and every track because you're scared that it would just take a lot of CPU power and it would just create a, a strong ducking and all of that. And you just want to have, Hey, let me just have all of these tracks and do another bus. Just load in one side chaining plugin and let that plugin do the side chaining for all the three tracks at once. Can we do that? Well, let's check it out. So over here, I have uh, three pianos and atmospheres and bass. So I'm gonna put these three, oops, into the bus that we had. So I'm not sending it to stereo out because you're gonna have a duplicate sounding tracks. So you don't want that. So I send it to a bus, which is the side chain bus that we had created. Let me just look at if the cake is sending to the bus. No, all right, great, great. And let's go to the compressor. Let's load in that compressor over there. Let me just switch off these compressors and then just hit play. Uh, make sure that's solo. Let me just hear the sound is coming out. Yeah, it's coming up. All right. And let me just confirm if the side chaining is happening on the kick. And let's just play. So you can hear right off the bat that it's too much of ducking. Plus, you don't want so much of ducking in all of the tracks. I mean, it shouldn't be uniform, right? Yeah, for bass, you need a bit of fast ducking so that you have a kick stand out. But for atmospheres and pianos, you can hear the transients are missing out. And it's just sounding really bad to your ears. I mean, it's subjective if you don't want to have piano or you want to have only bass and atmospheres. If you, have, if you have another low end growly sub bass and you want to have two different basses sent to another compressor, then it makes sense. Then you can send uh, two different similar frequency range instruments to a bus and then side chain it. It would, it would just sound the same. So, but in order to have different instruments sent to a bus and side chain it, it would not create the desired effect that you might be looking for. So keep that in mind. This is another way that you can do it, but keep that in mind. If you don't like it, go back to the second or the first method. It's totally up to you. So there you go, guys. That's about it for this video. I hope you learned something out of this. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It helps the YouTube algorithm send out this video to more people and more people can watch and benefit from it. If you like this content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care and cheers.